Good morning all. Well I've just been sent a new power bank and uh, also an in-car cigarette lighter charger adapter thing so I thought I'd charge the power bank from the cigarette lighter adapter. Bit boring you're thinking? Well not really because this power bank has Qualcomm quick charge technology and so does the cigarette lighter adapter Qualcomm quick charge 2.0. So here's the power bank on amazon.co.uk and it starts to get interesting even just when you start reading the title. This is a quick charge 2.0 10,000 milliamp hour portable external battery fast charger 16.2 uh, watts and it supports 5 volts, 9 volts and 12 volts uh, quick output and they've suggested it's for the S6 and the S6 uh, Edge, which I think are Samsung Galaxy models. And there's a bit more stuff here on the bottom of the uh, power bank. Input is DC 5 volts at 2.1 amps or 9 volts at 1.8 amps. USB at 9 volts. Interesting. Output is DC 5 volts 2.1 amps, 9 volts 1.8 amps or 12 volts 1.3 amps, 1.35 amps. I wouldn't mind seeing these high voltages in action. So that's what I'm going to try and do now by putting one of these um, USB power monitors, the uh, YZX Studio ones, in between the cigarette lighter charger and the power bank. And you can see here that this has a voltage uh, input range of 4 to 13 volts. And uh, Frankie, who gave me these, has confirmed that they are in fact Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 compatible. So let's see what they say. So I've got my big lead acid um, car battery starter unit here which has got a 12 volt cigarette lighter type output and I'm going to plug this into it. Now on here we have two sockets, uh, a green one which says it's an out 2.4 amps and the orange one which says it's a QC 2.0. So I'm going to put this into the uh, car charging unit and then put in this red uh, power monitor and see what it says these two ports actually are in terms of the signaling. So first up we have the green socket and that's showing as an Apple 2.4 amp with 2.75 volts on each of the uh, D plus and D minus pins and we're getting 5 volts coming out. Now the quick charge 2 port is showing up rather boringly as a USB port half an amp capability, uh, 0.14 volts on both the D plus and D minus lines. Hmm, that's a bit dull, but of course I haven't yet plugged in the power bank, so this unit here hasn't been able to communicate with a Quick Charge 2 compatible device. So let's plug that in. I'm going to do that on camera because some quite interesting things seem to happen. That said, QC 2.0, it's saying 5 volts at the moment, now it's gone to 9 volts. It did say 12 volts initially, but it says QC 2.0 HVDCP, so that's a high voltage dedicating charging port. It's now uh, detected that it's 9 volts, it's actually showing 9 volts on the display and 0.64 amps. I can go into another mode to get a watts reading for that, but yes it seems that the YZX Studio uh, power monitor is QC 2.0 compatible. It actually recognizes the port, so that's good stuff. So in this screen, uh, we can see that we're getting 8.94 volts uh, running over USB, uh, about half an amp, so that's 4.3 watts. Now it is capable of going to higher uh, power levels than this, but I figure this is probably at this level because the power bank is reasonably well charged. It's showing uh, three LEDs there with the fourth one flashing. If this were a bit more empty, and I will empty it out uh, later on today, I think that would probably have a higher watt reading there. Now this power bank on its input can only use 5 volts or 9 volts, so I can't show it running at 12 volts. Uh, that I'd have to do on its output, but then I'd have to have a uh, Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 compatible phone, and at the moment I don't have one of those. 
Now let's say you were charging via this cigarette lighter adapter um, a QC2 compatible device and then you pulled the plug out and immediately plugged it into a device which isn't QC 2.0 compatible. You'd want that to drop to 5 volts instantly. Let's see if it does. Yes, I mean it drops down reasonably quickly. That's just capacitance probably. Uh, yes, there must be some sort of capacitor in this thing. So that's dropped to 5 volts so I could now safely plug this into a non QC2 compatible device uh, immediately after it having been plugged into a compatible one. Now it's quite interesting how long it takes to uh, communicate with the device receiving power to uh, change the voltage. If uh, This is at 5 volts at the moment. If I plug, oh, you've got an average voltage there of 7.7, .7. that's because I've been uh, partly at 5 and partly at 9. So let's plug this in and see how quickly it communicates the QC 2.0 facility, still 5 volts there, and then it jumps up to 8.9. So it took 3 or 4 seconds. I've no idea what's involved in that uh, arbitration or negotiation between the two units, but of course it has to be pretty rigorous because you don't want to be shoving 9 volts up uh, the USB socket of something that can't really take 9 volts. Now, is this all done with uh, D plus and D minus voltage levels? I would have thought it would have to be more sophisticated than that. But if you watch what happens when I plug in the uh, receiving device, initially we've got 0.14 on both those pins. Let's plug in that plug. Now it's about half a volt, and then the bottom one drops to almost nothing. And then when it finally goes to this 9 volt mode, we've got 3.26 volts on D plus and 0.4 volts on D minus. Is this all done with uh, voltage signaling or is there actually data flowing through there? Maybe there is data and it's just showing the average voltage levels um, while that data is going through. Have to do some reading on this I think. Now I can't find very much at all on this QC2 technology. This is an article on Android Authority and it has a sort of how it works thing. It talks about QC 1.0 and then QC 2.0 and then there's a class A and a class B. It says class A devices will uh, also work with 5, 9 or 12 volt supplies. So that shows how these higher voltages can um, produce the higher power levels but it doesn't really indicate how the signaling is done whether it's done through data or just voltage levels on the D plus and D minus pins. Uh, we've got a comparison here between quick charge 1 and quick charge 2 uh, maximum current quick charge 2 is 3 amps. I'd be amazed if you can get 3 amps through the uh, USB micro connector. And then there's mention here of USB 3.1, power delivery 2.0, and this talks about 5 volts, 12 volts, and 20 volts, uh, but no mention of the 9 volt standard. And so now we head to Wikipedia's article on USB. And here are the power standards, and we've got the USB power delivery with talk of 5 volts, 12 volts, and 20 volts. No mention of 9 volts here, and actually no mention in this whole article of the Qualcomm Quick Charge 2 standard. So it doesn't appear to be a standard at all. It looks like it might be some proprietary system, which, who knows, would it stand the test of time? So that was a quick look at Orkey's uh, cigarette lighter and power bank, which are QC2 compatible and uh, the higher voltages which you can actually see on the uh, YZX Studio monitor. Now I'm going to do full reviews of the power monitors and also the Orkey QC2 compatible devices uh, possibly on this channel possibly on my other channel Julian's reviews but uh, for the moment that was just a quick look at QC2.0. Cheerio!